going on guys we got a little bit different video coming at you today this is a direct head-to-head -head comparison of the two most popular portable kayaks on the market this is a video that i certainly wish i had and i'm sure a lot of you people will appreciate having this actual video i feel like every video on these two products is a promotional video like they were given the kayak they were paid to do it something's going on like that and you never can take those seriously you got to take them with a grain of salt either they're being paid monetarily or they're being paid with content or a product uh if they give a bad review they don't get products anymore so even if there's no actual money exchanging hands you really got to take that stuff with a grain of salt and you might not be getting the full picture as with all my videos you guys get exactly the reality of the situation i purchased these two products myself nobody knows who i am over on the left is the oru kayak bay st and that little box unfolds into a 12 foot three inch kayak it's 25 inches wide and it weighs 26 pounds that black bag inside of that's hiding the pack a yak 142 bluefin uh, appropriately named because it's a 14 foot two inch kayak that weighs basically 60 pounds like i said there's zero videos that aren't promotional videos of these things but moreover they're never in the same video they're never like a direct head to head and these are the two big dogs when it comes to portable kayaks and when i was looking for a kayak I mean, portable kayaks are just such an attractive concept. Transporting a 14, 12 foot boat logistically is just a nightmare. You need a trailer, you need a, like a roof rack. Now you're gonna like damage your car, like you're gonna scratch your car. Like it's just such a pain in the butt to transport an actual kayak, which is why this was just such an attractive concept to me. And if somebody could get it right, man, that's just like money. Uh, just absolutely worth it in every way. They're both touring kayaks and they're meant for uh, kind of rougher conditions. Uh, they're meant for actual touring. You know, you want to go camping, you want to go out in some little bit rougher water. Uh, they both say that they're good for class two water, stuff like that. So we're going to dive right into it and we're going to set them up this is going to be a little bit of a longer video because I'm actually going to set these things up unedited right in front of you right now and we'll just see what the process is like and if it's actually like the promotional videos display and the company's display and stuff like that. So uh, let's uh, dive right into setting these things up and then we'll talk a little bit more about their features once they're set up. All right, so we're going to do this thing without any cuts. We're going to set these two things up and we're going to see how easy... It actually is to set up these two compared to each other and compared to the company's claims. We'll start with the Oru. I've set this thing up maybe three or four times, so I wouldn't say I'm an expert. But it's a little more complicated, I just tell you that right off the bat, than the Pakayak. This is the seat bottom kind of like the seat frame inside you have the actual seat it's this really thin little padded thing you can see I haven't used that yet we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video once we get these things set up these are the zipper channels to set it all up and then you have framework a little bulkhead now the RO does the thing that Uru is known for, this little transformation gig. And that's actually the front of the boat, right over here. First thing you want to do is give it some sort of form and you connect this cable to the front 
the folds, they say they break in and they'll kind of form more themselves. I found that the folds kind of do their own thing until you force them into place. The seat framework is the next thing to go in. You'll hear that snap into place. If you guys want to skip ahead to more of an informational review, go right ahead. But if you're interested in seeing somebody actually set these things up, you don't see that very often on here. Now you push this forward bulkhead into place. Kind of fold that. Then there are these straps you can tension on both sides. Take your zipper channel. You kind of need to push down and kind of hold it together. You can use this strap if you tension this. It makes it a little bit easier. You can see it kind of forms the boat a little bit for you. Now you push down. Get this zipper in the channel. Second zipper. They used to come with three zippers. Now they only come with two. That makes the process easier. Then there are these little like rubber caps. And that's supposed to kind of seal the nose from any water and then over that is a little neoprene cover it goes over all of that and that thing isn't the easiest to put on it's pretty tight But that's how that goes. And then this thing comes to the front, snaps there. And then these two deck lines just crisscross each other, just a bungee. Then you have a latch that snaps shut. Now, put the seat in, put the seat back, and then the two halves go into it. Like that. This is that tensioning strap I was telling you about on the other side. And here's that little rubber cap. You have this thing, the bulkhead, that goes into these little channels right inside the boat. It's kind of hard to keep it there, but if you do that step and that step first, I find it'll stay in place easier. Then again with these zipper things, you gotta push down, get them to snap into the channel. You have another deck line. That little cord is for assembly. Take this thing, get it to snap in. Close it. Now you have this little 
plug that goes into the nose like that and then the same neoprene cover goes over the top and then this thing just connects to it and now we're basically all set up we have to latch this get that into the channel latch back here that latch is shut and then on the actual seat you'll have tensioning straps so you can adjust your seat you can connect those those straps just sit idly under the seat support or frame, whatever you want to call it. Set those a little bit. Oh, actually, this happens sometimes. So you'll have the little seat thing will come out from the actual channel it's supposed to be in. You'll, I'll show you a little bit close up of it. There we go. Now it's locked in. And then, see, this thing just slides underneath a little bungee and that's that. So there you have it. That took about eight minutes-ish, I would say, from uh, complete box to boat. Uh, they say it could take five minutes or less, so I guess I'm half as good as someone who has done it a number of times. Dive right in to the Pakayak. Bluefin 142. You'll see this thing has a totally different method of packing up into a bag we have one of those little Russian doll things that like fit inside of each other it's basically the same thing as that it comes with this towel for if you're like on the beach or something and you don't want to get it sandy you just lay it out and so now you have a nice clean surface to put your kayak on so what you do is you set that up like that you set this up like this and now you build two separate sections Let me see if I remember which one goes where they really only fit one way there's your seat you can see it's much more substantial. It's kind of shaped like a butt. It's kind of nice. Pull this out. And then we just keep stacking away. There's a little cover that goes on the bottom one. So that doesn't scratch it while you're stacking away. So now we have two separate towers. Let's move the camera back a little bit. All right, so we have two separate towers now. They get kind of tall, so I figured it'd be out of the camera it was, so I moved it back a little bit. Now these are not connected yet, so we pull these waterproof covers off the bulkhead section in the middle and now we have access and I'll actually show you we have access to these little tension hooks 
So these little tension hooks come on and they hook onto the other side and then latch. And they actually have a locking hook. You can see right there that lock so they can't come undone unless you specifically want them to. So now you go through and you connect them all. So bring your arm down. It's really quick. It's also very intuitive. It, it doesn't take any know-how to do this at all. The Oru does. That takes a bit of practice. This, you don't even need to like read anything really. You could watch one video and you're like, oh, I get it. Those just snap right on. So now that I've set up my two sections, I can close this. This probably takes more time than putting together the entire kayak, <laughs> making sure that those are airtight and waterproof. They're like a rubber, soft rubber, and they seal around that like a gasket now we set this side down we set this side down make sure that's out of the way now we have more of those hooks all inside of here to hook the two halves together so you just put those right up against each other, and then we start flipping away. And they have this nice pad that I'll show you in a minute that fits right into there. Now, if you want, you can fold this thing up into this like neat little package right here. It has like two sides that fold in like that. And then you can slide this actually into the boat. And then it will hide inside the boat like that, which is pretty cool. So you always have your uh, backpack. Brain just froze for a second. We'll live. And there you go. You have the pack of yak set up and ready to rock. All right, so there we go. If you guys skipped ahead to this point, we're going to talk about features. We just did a complete build. You could put that in fast if you want to see the actual build process of these boats by a real person who's not an expert and who actually owns them. This is a solid look at the actual boats next to each other, their profiles, their features. Let's go over the actual features of these boats right now and then I'll actually talk about my opinions on them. So. The Oru, its feature is that it folds up. <laughs> that's, that's all the features, pretty much. You have a little bit of bungee right here. You have a very thin seat right here that's just like this foam kind of pad. Uh, it's very thin, flimsy. And that's it. There's really nothing else to it inside. You have an actual bar. It's like a plastic bar with those straps right there. And you can pull the bar back and forth and loosen the straps to get it further forward. 
I noticed I am 6'3", and I had the strap pretty much all the way out. I did fit in it fine, but due to my height, uh, my knees were a little bent. And one other thing is my feet were very squished inside of this kayak, uh, height-wise. So like that way, you can actually see the bulkhead right there. So when my heels were on the ground or on the bottom of the boat, I could not actually turn my feet straight up. They were at like a very crooked angle. Uh, my shoes were probably the problem, but if you're a 6'3", and you wear a size 12 shoe, your feet are not gonna be able to stand straight up in the Oru kayak. And uh, yeah, that's basically it for features. You have that foot well, you can adjust the seat, and you have those straps, and then it folds into that convenient box, which is uh, a very cool concept, very, very cool concept. Uh, I guess another pretty cool feature is the fact that it is extremely light. I'm holding this out in front of me and I'm actually doing a front delt raise <laughs> with, with this boat <laughs> just now. So that was literally one hand, the other hand's holding the phone and I was just able to pick that boat up and raise it up and down <laughs> with my arms straight. That is a very cool feature and one of the main selling points of that boat. However, we're gonna talk about that whole situation once we go over the features of this. Grab handle over here. We have a complete airtight compartment. Now this is really cool for if you are gonna go and you're gonna go some kayak camping or something like that. That's a complete waterproof bulkhead and section of the boat. Another thing that this aids in is not sinking. <laughs> So if you sink the Oru, you're gonna get water from tip to butt. That's all gonna fill up with water. And it's gonna be kind of a nightmare. They sell float bags that fill up some space inside the fore and aft bulkhead. There is storage in theory there, but it's not waterproof at all. Uh, this water gets in this boat pretty readily so anything you do put in there is going to, have to be in a dry bag and then you can kind of see the black so you'd have like this little piece right here you could fill with stuff and then in the back you have a pretty large section because you have behind the seat and then you have a bulkhead somewhere like right here there it is right there and then you have this small section so you can put some stuff in the oru kayak but it's not waterproof at all. And then here we have adjustable foot pegs, like actual kayak plastic adjustable foot pegs. You move that little flag to the side that allows those to move in and out. And then you put that flag down and it locks them there. So if you're small, short, you can uh, move those all the way back. You notice I have them all the way forward for two reasons. They have to be all the way forward and locked in order to put this together into its backpack. So to fold it all up, or not fold it all up, but stack it all up, those have to be all the way forward. Otherwise it won't go on top of the last piece. And then I am 6'3", my feet go all the way to the end, and that's how I sit. I don't need the foot pegs at all. <laughs> So I'm, I'm basically like the max height for this kayak. That being said, I do fit in it perfectly. So unless you're over 6'3", and you have like over a 34, 35 inch seam, uh, you're gonna fit in this thing fine. You have bungees, the grab hook right there. You have this nice contoured seat. This thing is much more cushy and it's contoured to your butt, so it's like kind of anatomically correct. You have this back piece, which is very flimsy, but uh, it is adjustable right here. You can just tension this with these straps. And uh, we have another bulkhead section back here, 
also airtight. And so if you fill this thing up with water, you're only gonna get from there to right here with water. So you're gonna have these sections all with air because they're airtight. So it's much less likely for you to have any issues while you're trying to empty water out of it and your luggage packed stuff will stay dry and you'll have an easier time using a bilge to get water out. Even if you couldn't empty the water out by pushing it out, you could bilge this thing out significantly faster and easier than the Aura. I've seen people flip those and when they're full of water, they, the boat didn't sink, but it's under the water so it, it, you can't bilge it out. So it can be a problem if you were alone. And we have one more grab handle in the back. So you have a huge cockpit too in the Bluefin and that's because it has to stack on each other. Here you can see you're a little bit tighter and my feet can actually stand straight up in the Bluefin 142. All right, those are the features. Let's talk about my opinions on the two. You can see that the Oru had its plastic on the seat cover. Why? Because this is my second Oru Bay ST. I initially was looking at all these products and I thought, oh, the Oru looks like a great idea. It's super light, it packs super small, and it looks very cool. So I'm gonna go with the Oru, cause you guys know me, I'm all about lightweight, getting stuff lighter and lighter and lighter. I think light is super cool. I mean, you saw what I was able to do <laughs> with this with this Oru, just picking it up like that. Uh, I'm not gonna have the same luck with this thing. <laughs> this thing is significantly heavier. And uh, I'm six foot three, 200 pounds, and a uh, natural bodybuilder. So <laughs> even me picking this thing up, it's kind of a chore. It's quite heavy. So this is my second Oru, and that is because the first one I got was very crooked in its folds. And when I put it in the water and started paddling it, it pulled really hard to the right. Like, <laughs> very hard. For every one left stroke, I would have to make seven long sweeping right strokes just to keep myself straight. It was basically unpaddleable. Like, <laughs> it wasn't even a boat. It floated. It's uh, a little bit unstable as well. The Oru is an inch wider. Uh, it's two feet shorter. Uh, it's definitely less stable of a boat, 100%. That could be due to its lightweight and the fact that the folds don't always fold the way they're supposed to as well. So that's what was making it track really hard to the right. Uh, they said that it was a fold issue. So what they did was they told me to send it back. I sent it back and they sent me a brand new one. Uh, they're a little bit hard to get a hold of. You have to contact them multiple different ways and then eventually they'll see one of them. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if you guys can see it right here but this is supposed to be sitting flat and it's at an angle this one is even more crooked than the one that they replaced it for so so you can see this boat is perfectly flat and perfectly straight and uh it, it's just like you can also see inside see how the left side is kind of like bulging out uh, it's uh, it's not supposed to do that. So I guess this is kind of a common issue with these Oro kayaks. And I spoke to, spoke to the lady, customer service, and they said this isn't a typical warranty issue, which is what really threw a red flag to me. So this boat does not function as a boat. It doesn't track properly. It doesn't sit properly. It doesn't fold properly but they're calling that not a really a warranty issue. That is a warranty issue. <laughs> the boat doesn't work, it doesn't function. 
as a normal boat and as it's intended to. So they sent me these secret videos you can't find anywhere else that tells you how to recrease it the way so that it will track straight. And honestly, the Oru is an amazing concept. If they could get it right and they could get the quality control under control, so they were replacing a crooked boat and they sent me a even more crooked boat. Guys, come on, just like look at your product before you send it out. The customer service person said that these folds can go out of whack just based on time. And then you have to like somehow recognize which fold it is that's out of whack. And then you have to recrease it yourself and guesstimate how long you're supposed to recrease it. Because they said a few hours to overnight and blah, blah, blah. But what if you crease it too much? <laughs> now you're going to have a problem the other way. And I'm actually returning the entire set. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Now that we're at the end of the video, we're talking about final decisions and final thoughts. Uh, I am returning the Oru. It's just too finicky of a product. The product isn't fleshed out enough. It's, and like I just said, it's just not repeatable and not reliable. Now the Pakayak, on the other hand, it handles beautifully. It puts together way easier. It's way faster to put together. It has way more features. It's way more usable. It is very stable for a 24 inch 23 inch kayak yeah i think it's 23 inches it's super stable it's very fast it's very comfortable it handles the water better like it's a better kayak in every conceivable way than the oro but it's just heavy so like if you're a small girl you're, you're not going to be able to like carry around this pack kayak even me, I'm not going to be able to carry this like I did this boat. I actually went, when I first used the Oru, I actually walked with it about a quarter mile uh, to where the water was from where the parking area was. I would not be excited to do that with the Pakayak. Uh, I could do it, but it wouldn't be very fun. Not only is the pack heavy at 60 pounds, but the straps that they give you on the pack are terrible. They suck. Uh, they're very thin. They're not very padded. There's also no way to pull the backpack. If you're a, a versed camper and backpacker uh, like I am, uh, a lot of the best packs, you can pull the top of the pack closer to your neck. Uh, there are tension straps on the top of the pack and on the bottom of the pack so that you can hold the weight closer to your body. And then they'll have chest straps. The Oru's pack had all of that plus oar holders. So if you had 60 pounds and a proper backpack, it wouldn't be that bad. And you could kind of like carry it a little bit further. But since their pack is so uncomfortable to hold, regardless of the weight, it's just not a good designed backpack. Uh, it's also hurting the fact that it's not quite as portable. However, it does have wheels. Uh, on top of that, it has wheels, but they're super small and useless. Uh, unless you're on paved road or something. Uh, as soon as you get on grass, even like right here, I couldn't roll it on this uh, grass. So that's a downside of the Pakayak. It's just not as portable. But this giant, amazing performing, comfortable, beautiful looking, spacious kayak fits in a full package of three feet and nine inches tall and only two feet wide and only like 16 inches long or like however you want to call it that's amazing in and of itself hands down that is by far the winner between these two kayaks and uh there's no regrets at all from buying the bluefin 142 it's a fantastic kayak and it answers the problem that i had which is i want a smaller package once i have a really cool performing hard shell kayak and it's repeatable it, the fold there's no folding issues there's nothing that's going to go wrong with this boat over time uh the only thing that can go wrong is if you don't treat the seals inside properly and they lose their water tightness but you can replace those seals and it's just such a great boat such a great design and it saves space 
you don't have to keep this giant boat just sitting in your backyard stuff like that so that is your direct head-to-head -head comparison i'm returning the uru and then i'm keeping the pakayak because it's just such a great idea the only thing that i would have on my wish list would maybe be to cut down on the weight of the pakayak if it was like 10 15 pounds lighter oh man that, that would just really night and day make this thing even more maneuverable that's a lot of weight though especially when they have a lot of hardware going in and out of this thing realistic wish list just make this thing's backpack better give me better straps give me better padding give me proper tensioners proper support let me carry the 60 pounds in a way that 60 pounds is supposed to be carried on your back uh, I think that that's really important. And give me those rollers that are meant for outdoor use, just standard. Like, just give us those standard. For $2,000, you guys can toss us some rollers for free because <laughs> they sell off-road wheels that you can put on the bag. Get, just make that standard, period. Just cut, let it come with the pack. And now you have an actual functional set that you can drag rather than carry. Because you can't carry it well and you can't drag it well. So it's just my only gripe with the Pakayak is the packaging it comes in. The backpack it comes in. Uh, so there you go, guys. There's your direct comparison. I hope this was very helpful to everyone. And it was a video I wish I had. And now you guys have it. There you go. See you guys.